Well, let me start by saying, for those of you who might be confused, I am not Ben Johnson. <laughs> uh, on the train ride from D.C. this morning, we passed through Baltimore. <clears throat> Doing so it reminded me of one of my favorite authors, Baltimore native H.L. Mencken, who I think would have had a good laugh at the hypocrisy, the posturing, the uh, moral prudery that's associated with this steroid controversy. Eighty years ago, Mencken aptly summarized this debate when he wrote, quote, the urge to save humanity is almost always a false face for the urge to rule it. So why are we here tonight? Is this about saving sport, or is this about some people imposing their view about what sports should be? If we're here to talk about fairness and competition, I'm dubious. Take Representative Tom Davis, one of the more camera-hungry politicians to demagogue this issue. After the 2000 census, Representative Davis maneuvered to have his congressional district gerrymandered to include as many Republicans as possible, ensuring his continual reelection and limiting the real number of options for his constituents to vote. He ran the next year unopposed. Davis also snuck a, a provision into an unrelated piece of federal legislation preventing an apartment complex from going up in his district because he told the Washington Post he feared it would bring too many Democrats into the district. This guy is cheating at democracy, and he's lecturing baseball players about fairness. If we want to talk about the health risks of professional sports, we might discuss the ballooning weight of NFL linemen over the last 20 years, or the corresponding drop in life expectancy that's come with it. Or we might talk about the particularly hellish world of thoroughbred horse racing jockeys, who subject themselves to sweat boxes, diuretics, suppositories, and intentional eating disorders. In fact, any world-class athlete subjects his body to stresses it wasn't really designed to endure. And as we've seen with government bans on consensual activity, from alcohol to gambling to cocaine to prostitution, prohibitions not only don't work, they make the activity in question more dangerous by pushing it underground. So what about the children? Survey data actually shows that teen steroid use has mirrored the use of other illicit drugs over the years. It went up mildly in the 1990s and has since either dropped off slightly or leveled off since 2000. It's likely that the same trends that govern cocaine or marijuana use govern teen steroid use far more than what's happening in the sports pages. In fact, a study released last year, <clears throat> and one of the few studies to actually attempt to find out what motivates teen boys to take steroids, found that the most reliable indicator of steroid use was a teen's own self-esteem uh, self and body image. The suggestion, and I think we can all agree it's pretty intuitive, is that teenage boys who do take steroids do so not because they want to look like Barry Bonds or Mark McGuire, but because they want to look good for teenage girls. So what is this debate really all about? I'd suggest it's about paternalism and it's about control. We have a full-blown moral panic on our hands here. And it's over a set of substances that, for whatever reason, has attracted the ire of the people who have made it their job to tell us what is and isn't good for us. Our society has an oddly schizophrenic relationship with pharmaceuticals and medical technology. If something could be said to be natural, we're, we tend to be okay with it. If it's lab-made or synthetic, we, t we tend to be leery. But even synthetic drugs and man-made technology seem to be okay if the aim is to make sick people better or broken people whole again. It's when we talk about expanding or transcending what we consider to be normal uh, that a certain uneasiness starts to set in. <coughs> There's an article in the Chronicle of Higher Education last month about university professors taking stimulants like Adderall to increase their academic productivity. Oddly, the article so co quoted several professors who considered this cheating at academics. I have to confess, I really don't understand this way of thinking. Academics is a search for truth and knowledge. If a drug can make that search more productive with few side effects, why in the world wouldn't you take it? It's also important to note that we consider completely natural and acceptable today was quite out of the ordinary not too long ago. A hundred years ago, life expectancy in the U.S. was 50. Today, it's 78. Thanks to technology, medicine, and pharmaceuticals, we're today taller, stronger, faster, healthier, and expecting can live longer than ever before. Genetically enhanced agriculture, anti-aging technology, and other advancements we've yet to see today will likely push our longevity even farther. It's an old cliche that sports is a metaphor for the human condition, but there's a lot of truth to that. As technology helped humanity obliterate a lot of these milestones and helped us move beyond what until 100 years ago had been a long, bleak history, similar advances over the years in nutrition, training, and using technology to improve technique 
have enabled sports records to fall with astonishing regularity. Sports is about exploring and stretching the links of human potential. Going back to even the pre-modern Olympics, when athletes ate live bees and ate crushed sheep testicles to get a leg up on the competition, uh, sports has never been about physical ability alone. It's been, been about ingenuity, innovation, and knowledge about what makes us faster and stronger and avoiding what might do us harm. It's always been part of the game. It shouldn't be surprising then that many of the biggest proponents of banning, performing, and enhancing drugs in sports are also suspect of some of these continued advancements in human achievement. Leon Cass, former, formerly President Bush's top advisor in bioethics, this is the same Mr. Cass who champions rigorous sports testing, has also spent much of his career actually lamenting the fact that human beings are living longer than ever before. He considers this contrary to some odd concept of, of natural order. Uh, of course, there have been Luddites and naturalists like Mr. Cass uh, standing athwart the tide One of, of, of human progress for much of recorded history. The essence of the agreement today, I think, is what people like Mr. Cass and, and some of our opponents tonight, they have a decidedly different definition of what's pure, natural, and human than what I do. I think the difference is that I'm sort of willing to take a live and let live approach and let everyone sort of explore their own boundaries and their own potential, um, whereas I think some of our opponents are more interested in imposing uh, their view of what is natural and what is uh, uh, human on everyone else, which of course brings us back to Mencken. Uh, I think uh, uh, our opponents uh, want to legislate away what they believe are bad decisions uh, and if a free society means anything, it means we should be able to make all decisions, including the bad ones. Thank you.